Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Westeros Total War. We are going to be using the Blood and Fire submod, which is basically setting the scene for the beginning of Season 7. Daenerys has landed in Dragonstone, Jon Snow has claimed Winterfell for himself, and the Army of the Dead is at the doors of the Wall. So yes, in today's kind of new campaign, I want to go ahead and dive into the sub mod. You guys have been really enjoying the Game of Thrones content, and I personally have as well. I'll be trying to leave this mod down below in the description. You can go ahead and find it on ModDB if you want to go ahead and play it for yourself. It's really simple to install. All you've got to do is download the mod, stick it into your uh, Steam data folder for Medieval 2 in the mod section, and rename it to Crusader, to Tronic, or one of the other ones, and then just load it through the launcher it's really really simple to do so in today's campaign i kind of want to do three campaigns with this mod um and hopefully we'll have enough time to do it because these will be edited let's plays where i go ahead and cut out all the boring bits and just bring you guys the interesting stuff that happens and we'll kind of set ourselves mini goals i want to do three campaigns as i said and one of them i want to do obviously as the night king i think that'd be really fun i want to do a campaign as how stark as Jon snow trying to kill the night king and i also also want to do a campaign as House Targaryen. I think all three of these campaigns would be really, really fun to do. And I think that's my plan is to kind of do like kind of three, four part campaign episodes. We basically try and complete our goal to the best of our ability. And today we are going to be starting off as Jon Snow or I guess Aegon Targaryen, whatever you want to call him. We're going to go ahead and try and defeat the Night King. That is going to be our objective. I've looked at the campaign and the Night King has an insane amount of armies beyond the wall. And we're going to have to either go and meet him at the wall to defend it. Or we're going to go ahead and have to try and defend Winterfell. I'm not too sure what the uh, the you know the exact thing we're going to have to do is. But we'll go ahead and find that one out as we dive into the campaign. So let's go ahead and turn up the difficulty to very hard, very hard. And let's get this campaign started. Okay guys, we are now in the campaign. As you can see, Winterfell is standing strong and we have a whole host of characters to go ahead and help defend it. We have Beric, we have uh, Clegane, we have Sir Davis Seaworth and we also have Jon. But these characters aren't just lifeless models, they have their own voice lines which I thought was a really, really nice touch that the modders have done. If we click on Jon... I'm ready. I won't let you down. He will not let me down. And he wants us to risk our lives for you, and you won't even tell us why. He has a whole range of different voice lines, and each of these guys do. Again, Sir, Sir Davis has his own lines. This war is not over. The closer you get, the worse the fear gets. I'm not fighting for some man or woman I barely know can sit in a throne made of swords. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think Clegane has his own line where he just says, fuck the king. It's a really nice touch and having these characters having their own voice lines, I think adds quite a lot. And I believe that, you know, a lot of the other famous ones down to the south, which we won't necessarily be worrying about, uh, also have their own cool lines like, you know, Jamie's, uh, Danny, And Danny might not come north. I don't know if he does in this mod. She's obviously down at Dragonstone right now, which is right here. And she's going to go ahead and basically probably be fighting Cersei the entire time whilst we deal with the north as you can see we do have a whole host of territory to begin this campaign from the last half to carl to the dreadfort going all the way down to Greywater watch down here um so we're not going to be probably using half of these settlements we're mainly going to be focusing on you know winterfell and probably the last half as we try and you know repel the night king's armies because let me tell you he has a ridiculous amount of men so it's going to be very very hard and we're basically going to spend the first part of the campaign just mustering our armies together and if he does stay beyond the wall i'm going to go and meet him i'm going to send my armies northwards to hit him before he hits us because i do not want him to you know preemptively strike us if we are ready to defeat him so for now we are simply just going to be upgrading our settlements building a few more buildings like getting some you know crop rotations in we need food before winter has arrived we'll also be spending a lot of our money on mustering soldiers as well i think that's going to be our number one priority is building as many troops as we can because we desperately need them we also have uh aria as well aria and sansa as our diplomats as well i don't know how much um, Arya would like to be classed as a diplomat because that's definitely not what she is about but we will be sending them down south to basically give us vision down there 
And maybe we can ally with someone down to the south. Because I believe in this mod, Jamie is actually currently in control of the Lannister land. So maybe we can go and speak to him and try and get him to come north or, yeah, you know, resurrect, or well, not resurrect, but bring up Edmir Tully to come and aid us. So for now, I will just be mustering soldiers and awaiting the oncoming storm. Oh, interesting. So House Greyjoy have actually declared war on House Lannister. So Euron, who is in control of the Iron Islands, has, I guess, been cucked and is not happy with it. So he's actually going to be going to war with Cersei. It seems like she is getting very, very few friends. As well as that, House uh, Tyrell have gone to war with House Baratheon. If you may be wondering, there are no Baratheons left by this time period. That is mainly because uh, Gendry is actually the head of House Baratheon. I'm not sure where he starts or if he does start in Storm's End. I'm pretty sure Daenerys is down here, down in Storm's End, which is like here. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I, I am sending down Arya and Sansa to hopefully find out. So they'll hopefully go ahead and give me some vision. I also went ahead and looked at some of the diplomacy as well. So we actually are allied with House Aaron, House Targaryen, House Tully, and also with House Baratheon. And our war with the Lannisters and also the Lannisters of the Crown Land, aka Cersei. The Undead, I, I think, are still mustering. I did just get a notification this turn saying that the Undead are actually the strongest faction and also the most financially stable. I guess because we don't have to pay their men. And they're going to be coming down. I'm really hoping that they do actually come and attack me. However, we might have to go beyond the wall. I'm not too sure yet. Our armies are mustering quite nicely. For treason is death. You can see that John has formed up his army. Uh, I just need to get some more archers in this force. We also have Tormund as I well. Have waiting for me back in Winterfell. Yeah, we have Tormund talking about Brienne of Tarth right there with his wildling force. And I am also mustering more men at the last half because I guess that's going to be kind of our bastion. I am just currently building some watchtowers kind of scattered around the map. So if the, if the dead do come... I will be ready for them. I also think I should send... I think I have a princess here, right here. Um, we'll send her up to the Night's Watch as well, because getting vision on their territory is going to be very important to know when the dead are marching, because I can we actually see the dead stats quite yet. Uh, the undead are enemies with everyone. Um, oh, yeah, so I guess are they classed as rebels? Well, I mean, they're enemies of everyone besides me. And they are also at war with me, yeah. I wonder why it doesn't show up on our side. Uh, that we're at war with them. I mean, the Night's Watch are going to have to hold firm against them. Uh, but yeah, for now, we are just kind of, you know, preparing our forces and mustering more soldiers for the oncoming night. Okay, guys, so I actually just decided to toggle Fog of War so we can see everything that's going on in the world, at least down to the south. I will try my best not to look up here, as you can see, that the dead are marching. Uh, but I'll try my best not to see what they're doing. But I thought it would just be better to see what else is going on. You can see Daenerys doing her thing down here in the south. We can see more of the Baratheon stuff and what Cersei's up to. And I think I should have just done this from the beginning. But hey-ho, um, you know, it's all good. It's all good. So yeah, we'll keep an eye on the south. And if anything interesting does happen here i will let you guys know and we'll keep an eye on king's landing i'll try and find there's Tyrion lannister leading this army down here that's awesome uh, i don't know where daenerys is at that's uh, not daenerys yeah daenerys will be somewhere i'll keep an eye on her though see what she's up to the uh, lot of boats are moving though uh, i think she does have a ton of armies to begin we've got grey worm and beyond solid here people as if they were my own friend. yeah i don't know where daenerys is but i know for a fact that this mod does have dragons so daenerys does have her three dragons and i i'm hoping she'll use them against king's landing but yeah i think this will just be much better now that we can see everything i probably should have done this from the beginning but you know and oh well oh well smart. Okay, so I've just got this mission to go ahead and basically trade my money for Eastwatch. So I think that's exactly what we're going to do in a couple turns. But basically, we can give the Night's Watch like five grand a turn for a couple turns. And they're going to go ahead and give us Eastwatch. And I will send John and maybe maybe Tormund to go and garrison this territory from the Night King, who is just mustering all of his armies to him. I mean, just look at how many there are. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, we will go ahead and trade for Eastwatch and then that'll be a great base for us to either strike beyond the wall or try and repel his forces as they do descend upon us. So let's go ahead and continue to upgrade our men. I think I've got John's army here. Yeah, John's army traitors. is looking pretty good. Fairly upgraded, a decent amount of cavalry, swordsmen. We do lack artillery and missiles, but that's what I kind of want Sir Davis' army to be more of, you know, more of a support army of lots of archers and pikemen, which can hopefully hold the front line, whereas John's army is more of like a shock army, an army that is going to, uh, you know, push 
in and kind of just he get the damage the done. Indeed, John, he does bring the storm. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we are mustering some forces around, you know, around the north. And the Dreadfort is looking pretty good as well. Picked up some heavy Bolton Spearmen as well under Tormund. So, I mean, really all he needs now is some cavalry. So let's grab some uh, Stark Cavalry for him. And that should be great for his forces. So yeah, I'll probably head north with like three full stacks and see how that fares. We might, you know, have a really easy time of it or it might be absolutely horrific. Can we actually see the Night King? anywhere i don't know if we can it looks like there's a lot of captains i know they do have armies and generals and stuff i don't actually know where the night king is uh maybe he's in the fist of the first men he is here somewhere because I've, I've jumped in as them and, and taken a look so i mean he is probably just you know hiding somewhere waiting to pounce when i least expect it Okay, so our armies are now moving north. We have John ready to go into, I guess, Brandon's gift and make his way up to Eastwatch. We have also uh, Clegane and all the rest of the boys moving up. And Tormund is looking to reinforce kind of John God. as well right there. If we take a look down the south, we actually do see Daenerys is conquering. She's currently at a sharp point with a pretty big host. And we have Tyrion kind of inlands taking territory. Uh, he's taken Felwatch, Grandview, and also Farntown as well. The rest of the other factions aren't really doing too much. Oh, he's also taking Godsbrook as well. Um, and I think he does have an army. Yeah, he's taking Willow's Wood. So he is conquering quite a lot, or she is conquering quite a lot of land. Um, whilst everyone else is kind of fighting themselves. The Ironborn have invaded, but also we do have a we do have a bit of Ironborn territory being conquered. I don't know where Jamie Lannister is. He'll be around here somewhere, maybe even in Casterly Rock. And oh my god, the Tyrells are swarming the land of the Lannisters. Wow, they are taking no prisoners. I guess the Lannisters are surrounded on every single side. But let's go ahead and let's see if Castle Black still want to give us this territory. England. So let's ask them for East, which I think our mission was for. Uh, let's make the demand, see what they say. So if we give them basically six grand for 13 turns, they'll give me Eastwatch. Let's go ahead and accept that. We also gain trade with them. I imagine, yeah, we are going to be losing money for the next 13 turns, but it shouldn't be anything too bad. And now we can actually send up our armies. So, yeah, everyone, make your way to Eastwatch. That is where we will make our stand and get ready to repel the dead. So, yeah, let's push everyone up northward and hopefully we can get there in time before the dead come but even if the dead do take the territory we'll just have to take it back you can see some white walker bowmen right there as well that's kind of funny we have now garrisoned east watch and i think it is time to go beyond the wall john will lead the charge with his army and we're going to go ahead and engage the first glimpse oh my god their forces and the balance of power is not looking good for us. We'll fight it and we will get our first taste of battle against the undead army. This campaign could suddenly become extremely hard. Um, I uh, Rest in peace. F in the chat for Robert Stark right there. But I, yeah, I don't know. Like I feel like the balance of power is whether their units are amazing or their units are not that good. I don't know. We'll find out in this battle. This will be John's first taste of in the, the engagement against the undead. So the White Walkers are quite hilarious with their thongs on, protecting them. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's a nice ass right there. So the White Walkers are going to be pushing forward. They're on their ranks. They've got 250 undead in each unit. And as you can see, their numbers are pretty crazy as they are pushing through the forest. We have a nice defensive line and I mean it's quite hard to see but when you do that you can really get the scope of the sheer scale of them. We have a pretty nice defensive position up here on the high ground so we will be looking to defend this. John himself will probably be leading the cavalry at some point. Unfortunately he's not mounting a dragon quite uh, yet on this version of the mob but I think Daenerys is either on a dragon or she does mount them so when we come to do our next campaign hopefully we'll see Daenerys you know doing her thing. Our archers are hopefully going to be in range fairly soon as well start hitting them down and I just got to hope that our spearmen can hold the line. We could also shield front to defend ourselves against them. Yeah let's do that. Let's get a nice defensive line with our, our wall infantry and I believe our swords can all form shield wall as well. So let's prepare ourselves. We'll have spears on the front in a pretty tasty formation. And then the infantry can just form up these tight shield walls as well. So, you know, anything that does break through, these then go onto the shield. That actually looks really cool because 
the shield from of like the circle spears are basically in all of the gaps that the shield wall leaves that looks very very cool and i think we are ready for the dead our archers are about to fire the first shot against the undead or oh, actually they're having to reload because i just quickly told them to go ahead and shoot flaming arrows but they will be starting to hit in and and do some damage i'm hoping i imagine we're also going to be receiving missile fire as well yeah from their archers but here we go the first flaming arrows are going out hitting the uh white walkers actually i mean it's not going to do anything to these white walkers oh these are the swordsmen as well so i imagine these guys are going to be really really difficult to take care of like super difficult to take care of um, as i don't think many of us are wielding dragon glass i guess john's literally like the only person who can actually take them out i think i've done something wrong when i've installed the mod as well because john has actually transcended this world and he has become a high right now and he is encased in silver he is no mere mortal so i think i maybe messed up the custom model install or something but yeah that's what john looks like right now and the undead are getting ever closer and closer to our formation. The archers are, I guess, just trying to kill as many white walkers as we can uh, before they do get close to us. Because, yeah, I imagine this is probably the unit that is making it a lot more difficult for us to, to win this day. I'm throwing out my knights on this flank to charge their ranks. Try and really dive into their formation. It seems like that was really ineffective though. Normally the cavalry charges in Medieval 2 are crazy good. But I guess the undead are just, you know, don't really get scared by cavalry charges like, you know, normal humans do. Their front line is also smashing against my shield wall. Hopefully the Stark men aren't completely outmatched and they can really start to dig in some damage. I think John might be having to come into this battle fairly soon. I'm, I'm happy that all my archers are continuing to fight down, but the White Walkers are now in fighting against my shield from and Yeah, I imagine as you can see there are no dead White Walkers. I haven't lost a single unit quite yet. And I guess sending the cavalry on the right flank is also a good idea. This, you know, this campaign might suddenly become a lot harder than it looked um, as the cavalry. Yeah, the cavalry are just getting demolished by the undead. So let's fall back. And I think we're going to have to quickly dispatch two units of infantry to, to move around and deal with these white walkers. So let's pull back the cavalry. Let the archers continue to harass them. Yeah, hit their units back here. And we will probably have to advance more infantry into the gaps now. So, I mean, this does look pretty cool. And again, if we just take off the UI as well, uh, Medieval 2 still doesn't look that bad, honestly. Yeah, if we just take this off really quickly, we can get a real nice look at the battlefield itself with uh, us still having the unit cards here as well. Um, and now the Stark Infantry have moved in. I'm expecting quite a lot from the Stark Infantry. And they're actually wading through the enemy territory uh, very nicely. Yeah, they are doing work right now. It's pretty impressive. And we're actually setting back some of the undead as they quickly try to reform. The cavalry has fallen back, but the undead are continuing to come. Uh, John, my dude, time for you to maneuver around here. Let's get this cavalry out here and let's push in the infantry on the flanks to try and keep them at bay. I do not want them overwhelming my flanks anytime soon. And I guess it's actually sending this cavalry down here as well. Why not? Because they're not really attacking the right flank much. The white walkers in the center, though, are just cutting through the front line. The cavalry charge is coming in now through the woods. Hopefully going to do some damage. Oh, they were actually hidden and they came out of the ground. That's awesome. The cavalry charge smashing down the front lines. So I've decided to commit my entire army now to this battle. The swordsmen have done a great job at breaking through the undead ranks, but now their numbers are really coming into play. And as you can see, the white walkers are reinforced with more dead as we continue to push on this battle line. John is about to lead a cavalry charge in support of the rest of his knights, which are fighting on horseback against the undead. Unfortunately, though, without flaming swords, they're going to struggle. I'm going to try and, like, hammer an anvil into the back of these undead, and I'm hoping that the cavalry will be enough to break them. Obviously, with John as well, you know, leading such a strong unit. Oh, no, John is actually already in the battle. What cavalry unit was that then? Which I hadn't got committed. I mean, either way, you can see John right here fighting on. We obviously do not want him to die, so we're going to have to be kind of careful with him, but I'm hoping a hammer and anvil will be more than enough to defeat that right, that left flank, and then we can wrap around. The cavalry on the other sides have now been reinforced by spearmen 
and also some swordsmen as well. So yeah, I'm hoping that we'll kill these guys a lot quicker as well. So we've killed 10 of the White Walkers that were in the center of the line just through sheer ammunition being dumped into them as well as a bunch of you know men giving their lives to try and take them down. So these beasts can be killed. However, the battle is looking increasingly like it is not going in our favor. They have broken our center pretty handedly. The left flank is starting to crumble. Our cavalry just not doing anywhere near as much damage as maybe I would have liked. And, you know, I think it's only a matter of time until the full force of my army breaks. So I'm contemplating maybe it is just better to retreat right now and save our soldiers for another day. We can retreat back to Eastwatch. We've got a taste. We've kind of felt out how strong they are and we can move forward. I also am pretty tempted though to stick in this battle because even if John isn't successful, we can then bring up Tormund and the rest of the crew to maybe give this, uh, give it a go to try and take out this army. I mean, ideally, I do not want them to stick around for, you know, the more armies of these units we kill, the better it will be because I, I don't know if the Night King can replenish his men in this campaign. Especially if we kill the White Walkers. I imagine the dead are probably pretty easy to bring up. But everything else is not as uh, yeah, not as easy to, to, to replenish. But yeah, things aren't looking great for us bat this battle. I don't think we are going to claim victory this day. And we are going to probably suffer defeat at the hands of the Night King for sure. Okay, we have had enough of the battle. Our forces have quite handedly been defeated by the Night King's advance force and... We are now just trying to run away with our tail between our legs. John has just escaped from the battle and now the rest of the infantry will get out of there. We will retreat back to Eastwatch, we will regroup and we will move in. We have killed 60% of their army, so it's not awful. You know, they only killed 20% more than obviously whatever else they try and take out now. We also took out a, a handful of the White Walkers as well. This unit, unfortunately, we only killed two, but I believe in the other unit, we killed a lot more as well. So, you know, all not lost. We tested their capabilities. We tested their strength, and now it is time to reform up. If we take a look at kills. Who, like, got the most kills in our army? Because that's what we obviously just need more of, just Stark Swordsmen. Yeah, I might be dropping um, a lot of our Stark um, Cavalrymen for just Bowmen and also more pikes. I think, yeah, I think Sir Davis's army will fare better because it's more of just a sturdy pike line. They can keep the enemy at bay and do a lot of damage to them. But yeah, John will be retreating back, you know, uh, behind the wall for defense after that uh, pretty, uh, pretty bad defeat we just received right there. So let's uh, move in some reinforcements. Is anyone in range? I mean, this army, Tormund could come in to try and finish off the army. There's not a, there's not that many of them left. I just don't know how good Tormund's army actually is. But I think we won't get a better chance than this. So let's move in now. Yeah, look how good these guys are. Um, yeah, I literally don't think we'll get a better chance than this. So let's dive in for another battle right away. And hopefully Tormund will be you know good enough. just Because we outnumber them two to one. Hopefully we can envelop them. Um, and finish them off but my god we are having so much trouble right now simply defeating one of the undead stacks and they have so many sitting in reserve this is going to be very interesting in the coming episodes also again apologize for the amount of trees it'd be very nice if that wasn't the case yeah i don't know what i've done wrong but all the heroes are like silver surfers i'm not too sure what i've installed wrong but we will simply re uh, form up our army in the same way and hopefully take them out. Oh, we do have some Fens, though. Nice. These Fens are probably great hard-hitting infantry, so we'll have to use them very effectively. We have the Bolton Heavy Spears as well. Now that we kind of have the advantage, I think he we have to just push towards them. The Wildlings aren't going to obviously be as strong as the Northmen. However, they do have some Javelin Throwers, which I'm going to solely focus on trying to kill the White Walkers. We have some Cavalry as well we can send around the flank. And we have a lot of numbers, so I'm looking to simply envelop the undead with everything I've got. And then, you know, just try and, well, we can't break them, but then just hammer and anvil them in the rear. Obviously, killing the White Walkers is our number one priority. And then we'll have these heavy axes come in as well to try and do as much damage as possible to their front line. Here we go. The spearmen are pushing forward, ready to charge down the White Walkers. I also really want to stop these missiles from shooting. I, I told my uh, my javelin simply just to focus everything they have on killing the White Walkers. If we can kill them, then I'll be extremely happy. And now we'll start giving the orders for the rest of our infantry, which are coming up to clash in. Um, we actually surprisingly have a, a nice overlap here against their forces. 
and we're pushing everyone. Tormund will also be thrown into the fight as well against the White Walkers and we'll have this good left flank of the cannibals moving in to try and take them out as best as possible. And we also have our cavalry as well, which are like over here somewhere who can make their way in. So even though they do have some really good soldiers, you know, we are surrounding the White Walkers. We have javelins coming in, hopefully whittling them down. There's only eight of them left. So if they break, I wonder if it finishes off the entire army or if the skeletons just still continue to fight. I'm not too sure how that's going to go down, but I'm, I'm hoping that our numbers will just prove too strong against the undead. I don't know how well that's going to go, but we will try our best. We have some more reinforcements we can also commit to this fight. Nice, we've managed to get these cannibals or fens round the right flank, and now they're going to come crushing in to the back of the undead, hopefully with a ferocious charge. I don't really look like they're doing too much right now, but yeah, I'm hoping that this will just do a ton of damage as they come in. Yeah, I do not remember the charges being this weak in Medieval 2, but I mean, I guess I guess they were. Just I've been spoilt with Three Kingdoms and also with Warhammer, where the charges do seem a lot fiercer than maybe in Medieval 2. Uh, I have also been hammering anviling. I'm trying to break this flank as best as, uh, best as I can. The White Walkers are down to 38 still in this unit. Wow. Let's send a unit of cavalry to hammer and anvil them as well. Um, we have also got these guys down to 8. But I really want to kill the, kill the undead because the less of these guys, the quicker we can just surround their, their, their white walkers. And the quicker we surround them, the quicker they die, basically. Tormund has given his life beyond the wall. And it looks like once again, our armies are going to be quite easily repelled. The undead are just insanely strong. And maybe John's decision to meet them at the wall was just too much. I mean, this is just one army. I honestly don't know what we're going to do um, if this continues like it. Because the Wildlings were no match for them. The Northmen were no match. I've only really got one full stack now. Uh, maybe we're going to have to ship Bran off to come and help us. Because without his help, yeah, I don't know what, what we're going to do. The Night King is going to start descending in. And this campaign might end in ruin. However, we will see it to the end. Whether it's our destruction or the Night King's. Uh, so let's just retreat from this battle and look at the aftermath. With over four and a half thousand soldiers, we only managed to kill 900 of their forces. That's absolutely wild, just how strong the undead are. I mean, we were just using wildlings, so I imagine the dead had an easier job against that than, say, Rob's army or John's army. But even still, man, that was brutal. I honestly don't know if they got on the offensive, whether or not we'll be able to hold them at bay. Because as you can see, we just lost two armies. They're probably going to chase us down now. And, you know, Clegane is not there. You can see that Tormund has been killed as well. So that's pretty awful. And the undead executed the army. I mean, we managed to kill the whites leading this force. And it would be really cool if they managed to make a script like when... Oh, wow, that is actually... Or did the army just move? I'm not sure if the army just moved or what. Did it just move? Is it this army? Oh, yeah, I wonder if the army disintegrated because we killed the whites. I wonder if that's the case. I don't know. But, I mean, either way, it's given us time to now uh, retreat John back into here and repair everything that you have at your disposal. We also need to upgrade every building we have here so we can just basically recruit men left, right, and center. The, uh, yeah, everyone beyond the wall uh, get behind it. When I see it. And we need to we need to build more men like ASAP. So let's get more of the Umber Swordsmen going. We need a lot more men. And maybe Bran is going to have to come to the wall as well with a force. Oh, Bran has, oh, oh, Bran has Brian of Tarth under his command. That's cool. Um, and he is obviously the Free-Eyed Raven as well. Um, does that do anything, Sworn Enemy of the Night King? Does that give us anything? I'm not too sure. Either way, he's pretty tanky, so that's nice. Um, I don't know. What was good at killing them? I guess just bowmen. Fire, bowmen. So we'll just amass a bunch of them and, yeah, rebuild our army, send more forces for John uh, to fight the undead. Can we for the do dip diplomacy with the Night King? I don't know if we can. It doesn't, doesn't seem like we can we offer him a ceasefire. He would actually take the ceasefire. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, anyway, that's funny. Um, but cool, guys. That's where I'm going to end this episode after two pretty brutal defeats. It is now our job to, uh, yeah, I guess try and take some settlements. I think it would be better for us to try and take Winter Tree and, and Crusters Keep. Um, and that'll be our way of pushing back the undead because I have no idea how I'm going to be able to defeat this, uh, these armies. If we can barely defeat the forces, we need like Daenerys up here with her dragons or something. 
um, because without that, we stand literally no chance. If we, you know, if it takes us two full stacks to just wound an army, then I don't know what we're going to do elsewhere. But thank you guys very much for tuning in to this episode. If you guys have enjoyed this, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.